Hello everybody, my name is Maxim and I am from Kojik Team. In this video, I want to show you how to integrate data visualization into the applications made by our app builder using JavaScript libraries. It is important to mention that this topic is only for people who have experience in making charts using JavaScript and who are more experienced in programming in general. In this video, we'll be using Google Charts library for data visualization. The result we want to achieve looks like this. Here we have our to do list application with different tasks, and we want to visualize correspondence by task state in a pie chart and correspondence by task type in a column chart. And right now, let's move to achieving this data visualization by ourselves. So, the first thing we need to do is to add a link to our Google Charts library in a head tag of our web page. So the first way to do this is by going to the desired web page. In our case, it is to-do list overview page, going to the editor of this page and pressing on this setting button and going to the option page head entries, open editor, and right here, we should switch to HTML by pressing on this button, just in this way. And let's remove it. And right here, we should um, specify the link to our JavaScript library inside a script tag. So I have already prepared this one, just in this way, just like that. Copy and just paste it in here. Afterwards, close it, save your web page, and let's publish our application and view the source code whether this link is added to the web page. Our application has just been published. Let's open it to see if it was added. Let's click on new page source. And as you can see right here, we have our script tag with the source to our JavaScript library. Another way to add a custom resource to your web page is by accessing the option of customer sources in our app builder. For this option, you will need to have a JavaScript file of the library you want to load. So let's move to the custom resources in this way. And let's click on upload resource just in this way and download. And let's choose our Google Charts library. And as you can see, it is just uploaded. And right here, you can choose whether this resource is active for now whether it shall be used for all of the web pages and whether it will be used in loaded action. So let's put tick on use and load it as we will need to see it later. And right now we need to add this customer source to a specific web page of our application. Let's move to the web pages folder, click on our to-do list page just in this way. And again, go to the settings button of our web page and to the option custom resources. Right here, we already have our loader.js and let's just add it right here in this way and just close and save your web page. And right now, let's talk about um, the general way we organize data for visualization in our app builder. As we want our data to be displayed right when we load our page, we should concentrate on load and loaded actions in our app builder, where load is responsible for server actions and loaded for the client ones. The General approach is to organize um, prepared data using call blocks on the load action and then visualize it using JavaScript on the loaded action. Um, the reason we will do this is because load action is executed before loaded. And this is why we will need at first to prepare the data on the load action using code blocks. 
The general thing we want to achieve looks like this. We have a correspondence by state and the correspondent by task type. To get the data for this pie chart is very easy. We basically need to get the values of these two fields, completed and in process. However, it is much more complicated for correspondence by task type. We'd first need to get the name of each type Afterwards, we need to count um, how many tasks are of this type. And the difficult thing is that there may be numerous types of tasks as the user is free to create his own categories. And right now, let's try to get all of this data. To visualize this correspondence by task type and to get its data, we will actually need to get a collection with uh, those elements, um, a collection of a new data type where the first field is for the name of the type and the second field, which will be integer, which will be responsible for the amount of tasks of this type. And to do this, let's go to our app builder and create a new data type. And uh, we will make it as a transient one because we do not actually need to store any instances of this data type in our database. They will be always changing. And this is the reason we make a transient type just in this way. So let's call it return for correspondence by task, just in this way, by type, create, and right here, let's add two fields. The first one is going to be a string one, which is going to be responsible for the name of the type. Um, let's just call it type, and let it be string with translations, just in this way. And the second one is going to be integer, which is going to be our count of a specific type integer. So create. Right now, let's move to our web page, our overview page where all the data will be visualized. And we also need to create a collection a field that will store those instances of recently created type called return for correspondence by type. Let's move to our page and let's create a collection. Um, let's call it for visualization, just like that. And select the type just in this way. Create it. And right now, let's create a server function that will be responsible for getting all of the required data. We go to functions, create new, and let's call it get values, just in this way. And right now, we are redirected to the cold block editor. Let's pass an argument to our function which is going to be a collection of this return type, return for correspondence type. Let's call it just return. And this is going to be a collection that is going to be changed through the function that is going to be filled with those instances for visualization. And so let's specify its data type, return for correspondence type, just in this way. And right now we're going to group our task instances by its type and count the amount of each of instances of each type in our groups. And we're going to be using queries blocks. So at first we need a for loop. We get it. And for each group in a queries group and aggregate block, just in this way, um, and as the first parameter, we should indicate the data type instances of which we're going to stream through. So we add a stream block and we indicate our task data type just in this way. And we also indicate, um, let's name it variable as a to do 
like that and we're gonna group them by the state of each task by the type of each task so let's show our to do variable and get it not state and let's get it um type of task just in this way and we also need to add an aggregation condition which is going to be our count so let's at first add an aggregate in this way and a count block and we're going to be counting our tasks so we're going to be counting to do let's get this variable and let's name it as amount just in this way and right now if the group we're going to be going through is not null so let's add an if block like that get it and uh, um, comparison block and if the type of our group like this one get it does not equal to null so let's switch it to non-equality and get our null um, we're gonna create a, a variable of our return type so we go to our return data type and create a variable of this one and let's name it as this group just in this way and we're gonna set to this group variable to this return variable um, the name of the type of each task and its uh, amount so we show this group variable and to our type we set um, the name of the type of the group so we show our group variable go to type of task and get its name just in this way and to our count we set the value of this amount field so let's again show this group variable and get the count we set it and we set it to our to the amount of our group we just get it in this way and we're gonna add this variable to the collection as an argument which is an argument so we choose the collection block add and we add this group should get it in this way to our return collection so let's show return variable and get it just in this way and right now let's save our progress and try to call this function on the load action so let's just save everything move back to our data type and go to our load action just in this way here we have some things that we were making for our overview page and right now let's try to call this function on this action the first thing we need to do is to create an empty collection of our return type let's just do it in this way return for correspondence by type we create this collection and let's name it as a result and right now let's call our function get values just in this way and let's pass this empty collection as an argument to our function so that it would be filled with instances of each type and its amount we should get this one get result variable and we pass it to our function and right now we need to set this value to a recently created field which is called for visualization it is in our item variable on our web page and let's set it the value of our of our collection that was just changed throughout the function so let's duplicate this one and set it the reason we created a field called for visualization of this type is because we want um, 
this data to be available on our loaded action. And this is why we needed to create an entire field and set it to some, um, in our case, a uh, collection of this result for correspondence by type so that it would be seen on the loaded action. Right now, let's save our progress and move to our loaded action to start visualizing our data. Let's move folder back and create an action, which is our loaded. Create it, and right now we are redirected to the code block editor. Generally, Google Charts to visualize um, takes as an argument array of arrays, and this is why at first, let me add some native code to our loaded action, just in this way. Um, I got some prepared one. It is in here. Let's just copy that in this way and paste it right in here. So here we create an empty array, which is gonna be passed to our Google Charts library. Then I push into this array the tiles of each column. And I also um, create an array of colors that which will be set to the columns. So we just save it and let's move on. And right now we should iterate through the collection of the data of our return type uh, that was created on the load action. So we get a for loop just in this way. We get this one. And for each task in uh, the collection of uh, our instances, so we show our item variable and get this for visualization collection, we get this one. We need to push into our R visualize array um, an array where the first element will be the name of the type, the second one will be its count, and the third one will be a color of the column. And we do this by native code. We do it in this way. And let me just copy this code for now, just in this way, and paste it right here. We save it. And as you can see at first, I choose a random color just in this way. And afterwards, I push an array to our existing array, where the first thing is the type, the next is the count, and then a random color. But we need to actually get from somewhere this type and count variables. So we set the first variable, which is going to be type. And we set the second variable, which is gonna be our count, just in this way. And right now, let's set some values to those arguments, type and count. So as for the count, we should just get um, the count of this instance. So let's show our variable and just get this count. We set it right here. And as for the type, we should get the type out of this variable. So let's get this count, not count, type, and we get it. However, as it is our multilingual string, um, it is not just a string for now. Um, we should at first get a specific translation to set it to here. And the way we do this, we go to our text blocks and select the block get translation. The first argument we pass a string because basically in our app builder, a multilingual string is an object where the keys are different translations and uh, different languages and the values are um, different according translations. And right now we should get the language for now, let it be the English one. So we need to do this by this way. We go to fetch instance and choose the data type called locale. 
just in this way. And right here, we choose the language. In our case, it is English. Let's fetch it. Let's drag it right here. And let's just call it N. And we need to get this variable just in this way and set it to our function as a language argument. So the data is prepared and right now we are ready to draw our charts. However, Google Charts Library needs to know where to draw this, uh, these specific charts. And we're going to be drawing them in two separate group boxes and at first we need to the google chart to be able to identify each group box this is why let's move to let's save all the codes and let's move to our web page just in this way and go to our overview one and right now we should set some ids or data identifiers to our group boxes so in this one, we're going to be drawing the correspondence by task type. Just in this way, let's move to the folder advanced by clicking on this group box and write an ID for it. So let it be tasks columns, just in this way. And as for this one, let it be tasks by chart just in this way by chart and we're done right now let's save our page and move back to the code block editor just in this way to do list and let's choose our loaded action the data is prepared for our column chart and right now let's prepare all the data to the correspondence by um, task state for our pie chart. Let's just create two integer variables just in this way. Integer create variable and let's duplicate it and let's just name the first one as finished and the second was as unfinished just in this way and let's set to the finished integer um, the value of completed tasks so let's set it just in this way and let's go to our item and get the value of completed ones get it and to the variable unfinished let's um get let's set the value of in process tasks just in this way go to item variable and get the in process variable and let's just connect it we just identified the group boxes that we want to write data in however um the ID that is in our app builder is not the regular attribute called ID in HTML. In our case, it is data identifier. And by using this data identifier, you can actually add some other attributes to an HTML tag, in our case, to our group box, um, by accessing it using data identifier. So to um, right, um, a chart by use, using Google Charts library, we specifically need to have an ID of some div tag. In our case, it's group box. And to set this um, ID to our, um, to our group box, we need to use this specific code. Um, in our, let's just copy that. Um, it looks just like this. Let's copy then and add a code block with some native code. And let's just paste it all in here. Um, also, let's change the name of the data identifier. It's going to be task columns. And let's set an ID, which is going to be called columns. And to our pie chart, 
um, let it be tasks pie chart and set the ID, which is pie chart. So you um, access this uh, div container using this data identifier and then using this function called attribute, we set um, a specific ID, which is the first argument, um, to a specific value. So let's just save our code. And we are ready to visualize our data. Right now, I'm just going to copy a bunch of code for Google Charts library. So the first one is going to be this. Um, this is a default uh, way to um, load our charts just in this way. Let's save it and let's add another block for visualizing in our um, tasks by type, just in this way. Let's copy this function in this way and paste it right here, just like that. Um, right here in this document dot get element by ID, we indicate the ID and our ID is, um, let's check it at first. Um, it is columns, so let's indicate it right here in this way, columns, let's save it, and right now let's execute another function which is responsible for pie chart. Let's load it at first, let's use a piece of code, just in this way save it and right now let's copy the entire function just in this way like that let's copy that and paste it right in here and let's also indicate here our recently created variables which was finished for closed tasks and unfinished for open tasks just like that, we save it and right now let's save our progress and publish our application to see the final result. Our application has just been published, let's open it to see if it all worked out. And as you can see right here we have both of our charts, correspondence by task type, correspondence by state. And right now, let's again move through some main conceptions that we looked through in this video. Um, so the basic approach to organize data, to visualize it in our app builder, is to organize it using, prepare it using code blocks on the load action, and afterwards um, visualize it on the loaded action. The difference is that the load action is the is responsible for some server actions, server operations, and the loaded is for the client ones. Um, afterwards, um, to make your functions work a bit better, and if you want to get some specific return type like we had in our case, um, you need to create a transient data type which uh, will not be stored in a database, but um, will be used in some of your calculations. Um, then uh, um, um, the next thing is about the string in our app builder, because if you want to get to some specific string value, you need to use get translation block because uh, by structure, um, our string is multilingual and we have numerous translations. And using this block, you will get access to some specific translation. Um, then as for using um, such inputs in our native code blocks, to get access to them, you need to use this specific syntax, as you can see right here, um, looks like that. Um, lesser sign, then percent, close like that from both sides. And the next thing is for um, laying some of your libraries to know where to do some action, where to perform something. So the first, for example, we needed to draw our both of our charts 
in those two group boxes and to let Google Charts know where to do that. Um, we at first set a data identifier to our group boxes and then we needed to add those ID attributes to our group box using this function as you can see right here we indicate the data identifier then we call attr function and pass right here to arguments where the first one is the id or some other attribute and the second one is um, the value of this id and basically i guess that's all um, this is all for today's video. I hope everything was clear for you, but please do not hesitate and feel free to contact us if you need some extra support. Bye.